Good day everyone. Today we will start a new chapter and will direct our attention to the study of thermodynamics. The illustrations shown are examples of phenomena or applications that use the concept of thermodynamics. We have here an automobile engine, a gas pipe, and even boiling of water. All of these examples use the concept of change of temperature due to energy transfer. So thermodynamics is basically about the energy transformations involving heat, mechanical work, and other aspects of energy. Thermodynamics addresses some practical questions like how refrigerator is able to cool its contents, what type of transformation occur in power plant, or in the engine of the vehicles. The objectives for today's discussions are discuss the meaning of thermal equilibrium and what thermometers really measure, explain the physics behind the temperature scales, Explain the meaning of heat and how it differs from temperature. Solve problems involving amount of heat absorbed or released by a system. Since we will deal more about heat, it is important to differentiate it from temperature. So have you experienced touching a wood and a metal objects that are placed in the same room? What did you feel in touching those objects? Majority of you might answer that the metal is much colder to touch than a wood. But in fact, those two objects are at the same temperature. So if we will base our definition for temperature on this given scenario, we can define temperature as a relative measure or indication of hotness or coldness. But using our bare hands, we will give a biased description on the temperature of an object. One person might say that it is cold, but for the other person, he might say that it is hot. So for giving an accurate description on the temperature, we have to measure the average internal energy of the molecules of an object. And this is done by using a device called thermometer. So if we are measuring the temperature of an object or substance, we are actually measuring the average kinetic and potential energies of the molecules in the system. So we can say that a higher temperature means faster motion or movement of molecules and moving fast will result to higher kinetic energy. So if we would like to get the temperature of this glass of water, we have to use a thermometer and it must be placed in contact with our system. We have to wait for the thermometer to settle down. Once the reading has a steady value, we can say that the system, which is composed of the glass, the water, and thermometer, reach thermal equilibrium. Which means, no energy transfer will take place between the objects. So let us see the next example to describe thermal equilibrium. We have here three objects, A, B, and C. Object A and B are in contact with each other. And A is in equilibrium with B. Objects B and C are in contact with each other. And B is in equilibrium with C. So even if A and C are not in contact with each other, we can say that A and C are in thermal equilibrium, meaning they have the same temperature. So if A and C are both in contact, there would be no energy transfer between them because they are in thermal equilibrium.
The idea of thermal equilibrium is the concept being used in thermometer. So going back to our given scenario, so if object C is our thermometer, it means that we have to read measurement when the object are in thermal equilibrium. This is also called as the zeroth law of thermodynamics, which states that if the two systems are at the same time in thermal equilibrium with a third system, they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So to emphasize, thermal equilibrium means the object have the same temperature and no energy transfer will take place. In discussing more about temperature, we will include the three common temperature scales. The Kelvin scale, Celsius scale, which is also called as centigrade scale and is the scale used here in the Philippines, and the Fahrenheit scale, which is commonly used in the United States. To know the conversion of Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa, let us understand its basis. So the freezing point of water in Celsius scale is 0 degree. And its boiling point is 100 degree. Between 0 and 100, there are 100 intervals or divisions. And each interval is called as degree. In Fahrenheit scale, the freezing point and boiling point of water are 32 degree Fahrenheit and 212 degree Fahrenheit. Between 32 and 212, there are 180 intervals or divisions or 180 degrees. Having these intervals as 100 and 180, we can now have the conversion of Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. So the Fahrenheit degree above freezing is 180 over 100 or 9 fifth of the Celsius degree and the freezing on the Fahrenheit scale is 32 degree. That is why to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, we have the formula as the temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifth multiplied by the temperature in Celsius plus 32. And to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, we have the formula as the temperature in Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 multiplied to the difference of the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. So for you to easily remember these conversions, it is advisable to know the basis for this. For the Kelvin scale, the freezing point of water is 273.15 Kelvin. So to convert Celsius scale to Kelvin, we have the formula as the temperature in Kelvin is equal to the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. To summarize the conversion formula for the different scales, we have here the temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifth multiplied by the temperature in Celsius plus 32. Temperature in Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 multiplied to the difference of the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. And the temperature in Kelvin is equal to the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. If we are dealing with the difference in temperature or delta T, we will use the following formula. The change in temperature in Fahrenheit 
is equal to 9 fifth multiplied to the change in temperature in Celsius. The change in temperature in Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 multiplied to the change in temperature in Fahrenheit. And the change in temperature in Celsius is equal to the change in temperature in Kelvin. Let us have example problem number 1. A pan of water is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. What is the change in its temperature on the Kelvin scale and on the Fahrenheit scale? For us to determine the change in temperature, we have to get the difference between the final temperature and the initial temperature. So, delta T or change in temperature is equal to T sub F or final temperature minus T sub I or initial temperature. In Celsius scale, delta T is equal to 80 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 55 Celsius degree. So, 55 Celsius degree is the change in temperature in Celsius scale. But remember that the change in temperature in Celsius is also equal to the change in temperature in Kelvin. So, our final answer for the change in temperature in Kelvin is also equal to 55 Kelvin. So, let us have the other unknown which is the change in temperature in Fahrenheit scale. So, to calculate the change in temperature in Fahrenheit scale, we have the formula as delta T in Fahrenheit scale is equal to 9 over 5 multiplied to the change in temperature in Celsius. So, delta T sub F is equal to 9 over 5 delta T sub C. We can now substitute our change in temperature in Celsius, which is change in temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 times 55. And the final answer is 99 Fahrenheit degree. So delta T or the change in temperature in Fahrenheit scale is 99 Fahrenheit degree. So as you can observe, we use the units of Celsius degree and Fahrenheit de degree for the change in temperature. So 55 Celsius degree is not the same or not equal to 55 degree Celsius. And 99 Fahrenheit degree is not equal to 99 degree Fahrenheit. So again, for the delta T, it will have units of Celsius degree, Fahrenheit degree, or Kelvin. Example problem number 2. Determine if the statement is correct. If false, change the underlined quantity or word to make the statement correct. So the given statement is, water at 90 degrees Celsius is warmer than water at 202 degrees Fahrenheit. This statement is comparing 90 degrees Celsius to 202 degrees Fahrenheit. For us to compare these two temperatures, they must have the same unit. So we will convert 90 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. And to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, we have the formula temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 multiplied to temperature in Celsius plus 32. And substituting our given, the temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 times 90, which is our temperature in Celsius, plus 32. And it will result to an answer of 194 degree Fahrenheit. So our 90 degree Celsius is equal to 194 degree Fahrenheit. So the statement is false. And the correct statement is water at 90 degree Celsius is colder 
than water at 202 degree Fahrenheit because 90 degrees or 194 degrees Fahrenheit is less than the temperature which is 202 degree Fahrenheit. Example number 3. Consider the following pairs of materials. A. Boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius and a glass of water at 50 degrees Celsius. Letter B. Boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius and frozen methane at negative 50 degrees Celsius. Letter C, an ice tube at negative 20 degrees Celsius and the flame from a circus fire eater at 233 degrees Celsius. Given these three pairs of materials or substances, which pair represents two materials, one of which is twice as hot as the other? So for this problem, it involves comparing the temperature of the materials. That is, we are asked for the pair of material wherein their temperature must be twice the temperature of the other material. Or, this problem involves ratio of temperature. And for this case, the ratio that we must have is 1 is to 2. So, if we encounter problem that involves ratio of temperatures, we must convert all temperature to Kelvin scale because it's only the Kelvin scale which is based on a true zero value of temperature or the absolute zero. So, again, these are the three pairs of materials and the first thing that we have to do is to convert their given Celsius temperature to Kelvin. And the conversion for Celsius to Kelvin is the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15 is equal to the temperature in Kelvin. So converting our first pair of substances, we have 100 degrees Celsius as 100 plus 273.15 which is equal to 373.15 Kelvin and the second material or substance is 50 degrees Celsius converting it to Kelvin we have 50 plus 273.15 is equal to 323.15 Kelvin letter B or the second pair of substances we have 100 degrees Celsius, converting it again into Kelvin, that is 100 plus 273.15, which is 373.15 Kelvin. And its partner is negative 50 degrees Celsius, converting this again to Kelvin, we have negative 50 plus 273.15 is equal to 223.15 Kelvin. And for the last pair, of substances, we have negative 20 degrees and 233 degrees Celsius. So we have negative 20 plus 273.15 is equal to 253.15 Kelvin. And our 233 degrees Celsius will be converted also to Kelvin as 233 plus 273.15 is equal to 506.15 Kelvin. So, we are now given the temperature in terms of the Kelvin scale. So, out of these three pairs of materials or substances, we have to look which of this pair has temperature that has a ratio of 1 is to 2. So, by inspecting the Kelvin scale temperatures, the pair of material that has a ratio of 1 is to 2 temperature is pair letter C because 253 is half of 506 or 253 times 2 will result to 506. So therefore, our answer 
is letter C, an ice tube at negative 20 degrees Celsius and the flame, which has a temperature of 233 degrees Celsius, has temperature which is twice as hot as the other. Example problem number four. You place a small piece of melting ice on your hand. Eventually, the water converts from ice at 32 degrees Fahrenheit to a body temperature of 98.60 degree Fahrenheit. Express these temperatures as degrees Celsius and find the change in temperature in Kelvin. So again, for the first unknown, we are asked to express our temperatures as Celsius scale. So therefore, to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, we have the temperature in Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 multiplied to the difference of the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. So let's start with the initial temperature which is 32 degree Fahrenheit. We have to convert this to Celsius. So that is the initial temperature is 5 over 9 times the difference of the Fahrenheit temperature is 32 minus 32. So our answer here is 0 degree Celsius. And for our final temperature, which is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit, we must also convert this to Celsius scale. That is, the final temperature is equal to 5 over 9 times 98.6 minus 32. And this will give an answer of 37 degrees Celsius. So our final temperature in Celsius scale is 37 degrees Celsius. So let's find the other unknown, which is the change in temperature that is expressed in Kelvin. So we can get the change in temperature as the final temperature minus initial temperature. And since we're already given the final and initial temperature in Celsius scale, we can now compute for our change in temperature in Celsius. And that is, change in temperature in Celsius scale is equal to final temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius, minus initial temperature, which is 0 degrees Celsius. And our change in temperature in Celsius scale is 37 Celsius degree. And since we are given the fact that the change in temperature in Celsius is also the change in temperature in Kelvin, therefore, our final answer is change in temperature in Kelvin is equal to 37 Kelvin.